Hello everyone, it's Peter here, Piot Fisner. How are you doing guys? So, in today's episode, we've got that monitor. Now, I had a problem with HDMI detect, so it couldn't, when you plug in the cable, it was showing no cable. Now, let us check the webcam, okay, here. And I was checking the, all the pins, and I was placing the cable inside and I was checking pin by pin if it's driving signal from the HDMI cable to here and if there's no cross uh, short, nothing, everything's perfect. Filters, okay. Then it goes through these, yes, resistors and they are going to the processor. So as you see, this doesn't look pretty, it's replaced, yes, and I had to do it twice, actually, well, uh, sorry, I'm wrong, I had to do it, uh, I've done it once and it didn't connect, I didn't clean it yet, uh, but I'll show you photos instead, because that will, that will explain you better. So this is the Banku monitor, which I was talking about. That's that's exactly the one. And um, you remove you remove uh, two screws at the back at the stand, and then there is one pin which you insert in, and the leg is going off. Then this bezel is going off separately from the back of the frame. So you see that's only at the back. That's the LCD monitor. Uh, then you've got both out because the plastic shield is going off and then you get this connector here which goes to the backlight and this one is on the side to the uh, menu buttons yes okay so these two are off uh, you see extra uh, tape here yes on this side and on this side because the original was the metal tape I didn't have it I had to mount it with something when I was ordering processor so this is a power supply this is the main board this is an LVDS connector which goes to here <coughs> in the monitor and here you've got one PH2 uh, screw here you can use I, if you don't have this tool this key or whatever you can call it you can use pliers with a, uh, with a thin tip and they will uh, they will be perfect to unscrew them. You can either insert one tip inside and second outside or just from the outside and then you can unscrew it. As you see we've got an HDMI and uh, HDMI, we've got DVI and we've got a VGA. So that's the board, that's the processor. Uh, now it's working back but it still doesn't show the picture for the HDMI socket. <coughs> that's the processor here, yes. Um, now we see uh, this, this is under the magnification. Now it's taking off and look what I've done. Unbelievable. I was so angry on myself. You guys have got no idea, literally. The heat was, uh, was not enough. And I, when I lift it and I see that it's moving, I lift it in a different way to grab it and it didn't go then i was heating 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 then i and it was moved on the side like you know like five pins or something was seen here in a gap and then uh, when when it moved you know it moved the way that it went to the back and then when i lifted up i i've done it yes so it was hectic job guys really here is the second on the side that's a new one that's a, that's an old one here is the first attempt to straight those um, pins, which wasn't that bad looking now, yes, after after that damage I've done. Uh, and here is soldered first attempt, yes, so first uh, unsuccessful actually. Oh, sorry, <laughs> those are the caps. So yeah, then I, I had to go pin by pin all 128 pins and I, I found out that it's working. But the problem only with working is that, uh, unfortunately, hold on a second, that's me, HDMI, that's one. Yeah, I'll switch off the, because uh, I need to just clean it and then put it back. So that's a clean flux, no clean, so that's okay. So now the problem is that 
through the HDMI we've got no picture whatsoever. We know that the port is passing through the signal, we see no problem. I don't have second port, I would solder it, yes? Excuse me, but at the end of the day, um, the port goes through those filters which we've seen, two filters, four channels in each, and then goes to the processor through the resistors. But if resistors are fine, if the filters are fine, what can you do? You know, you, you're assuming that the processor has an issue. Well, it's actually no, probably it's the HDMI detect issue, which I don't know how to check and I don't want to go into that rabbit hole to be true because I knew, I've checked that this processor is not programmable one, so in that case, you know, I can order it and risk it and it wasn't dear, so I said, okay, if it's not programmable and, you know, like, it shouldn't be programmable here, and I can use it, you know, so let me try this one, that's max I can try for this customer, the rest would be too high cost. Now we could use this LVDS cable, excuse me, order a board, which would then allow you to insert HDMI, but if the refresh rate is high on this monitor, we will lose because that board usually is, you know, up to 50, 60, 60 probably hertz. So that's first minus. Second foremost, there is a DVI and VGA. You can get higher resolutions, no problem whatsoever. Yes, yeah? so let's say customer will get DVI cable to HDMI cable or converter or adapter, whatever you will call it, and it will have the same quality picture what would have via HDMI. And, uh, and I wouldn't say it's a value to dig out more in this case. That's why, you know, for me, it just put it back to pieces, give it back to the customer, and that's full stop here because I can only charge for the repair attempt fee, yes, and maybe if customer will be nice, will tip me, yes, but that's all, you know, like I can't charge the customer for the proper repair because nothing is repaired, yes, plus I had to finish uh, with extra long time um, on those parts which I've pulled so I even spent more time yes so I've wasted a lot of time on it so it's no value for me nor for customer yes and you know that's it that's full stop what else I can tell you yeah well that's my options you know I won't be working with HDMI auto detect because you know I've seen there is a center diode, there is a capacitor, there is something else. All of uh, all of them were fine. Yes, I I did check the um, the pinout, which is you know first on the right side, I think. And I don't know what else I can test here quickly and efficiently so that I can help this customer. So that's my point of view. If I if I could risk something, I've risked it. Yes, if I could swap this uh, CPU, I've done it. But that's all, that's full stop. I'm not going anywhere. If you have any other advice what I could do with it, please comment down below. Uh, or maybe what I've done wrong or I didn't test, please let me know. That will be a lesson for me and for sure if in the future, yes, I could test that theory. Or maybe could lend my customer again, my monitor, and could maybe borrow it just for the testing yes maybe you know maybe maybe i would gain some new knowledge but for now for this day today i would say that's all i could do that's all i could try and that's a lesson for me as well if another customer would come with the same issue i can say look it's not a hdmi port it's a risk of the processor. If the processor will be swapped, I need to charge you service for swapping the processor, not a repair attempt fee, because it's too much work, too much loss for me, plus I've rented the monitor for free, no value, it's, it's just too much. So cable adapter from DVI to HDMI make total sense in my head, and that's why we call it a day, guys. And unfortunately, we call it a day because it's it's just too much. Well, anyway, I'm repeating myself, so better we call it a day with this video. And if you did like the video, if you have something you've learned from it, please give us a like button. Here's likes to use or subscribe. 
if you haven't already and thank you for watching and see you in the next video if possible let's fix them all take care bye bye